While the world of social media influencing may seem superficial, or it's called superficial, it also can seem a little detached from reality. The fact is many people look to the famous faces on their Instagram feeds for comfort, advice and wisdom and what those faces say matters. Now there is plenty of bad information out there, celebrities touting the benefits of deworming medication as a treatment for COVID for example. But some influencers have been, have been using their powers for good and have joined the push to get Australia vaccinated. Good morning, let's go get vaccinated. Got the vaccine. Okay guys, I'm officially halfway vaccinated. I got the cool card that they give you. My girlfriend and I walked out of there feeling like the most excited and the happiest we've been in ages. <laughs> It might be quite a different tone to the daily press conference spiels, but social media stars have been using their own brand of influence to encourage their followers to get hashtag vaxxed. If you don't want the vaccine, I don't want to hear about it because actually, who the f*** are you to say? Yeah, I just don't trust it. I know you do ketamine. There's something weird going on with this vaccine. There's something weird in your MDMA you take every weekend. The role I see for influencers is they are actively creating this social norm where getting vaccinated is good, it's normal, um, it's cool. We both got our jabs and I'm feeling 10% sexy already. I actually look hotter. Like, I actually look hotter. That's clearly like a little bit of a joke, but it all plays a role in creating pro-vaccination sentiment. A lot of these influences are actually like linking out to material that people would not have found on their own. It's networking that information into communities in an accessible way. I'm not seeing a lot of compassion and empathy from these anti-vax ding-dongs for the mental health of frontline responders. These influencers are also helping to neutralise the COVID misinformation and disinformation that social media platforms have been struggling to keep at bay. If you're like 21 years old and you say to me, should I get vaccinated? I, I go, no. It turns out I got COVID. So we immediately threw the kitchen sink at it, all kinds of meds. Mom, this week, mom, podcaster Joe Rogan uh, announced he'd contracted coronavirus and was treating it with a cocktail of drugs, uh, including uh, ivermectin, a medication uh, used for parasitic a diseases. Drip, and I did that three days in a row. In Australia, there's reportedly been a tenfold increase in imports of the drug. The TGA says there's no proof it works. The TGA strongly discourages self-medication and self-dosing with ivermectin for COVID-19 as it may be dangerous to your health. Naomi Smith says influencers have a crucial part to play in countering conspiracies and modelling responsible behaviour. A lot of the time people trust influencers. They have these parasocial relationships with them. They feel like a friend, like a trusted friend. They feel like um, influencers are authentic and that they're speaking authentically to them. And I think that can be a really powerful, positive thing. Oh, look, there you were. Oh, I am. <laughs> so how did this happen? Like, I know, like, after you, you you've done work in reality TV and mm -hmm. you've built this, like, big profile. Mm -hmm. You've spoken a lot into, like, the feminist space, especially after you went through this slut-shaming incidents on The on the Bachelor. You, mm -hmm. built, you built this real real following. How did mm -hmm. you become involved as, like, an anti... As, as, sorry, as a, as a vaccine... <laughs> like, let me get that right. Yeah. As a vaccination <laughs> campaigner. Well, I actually think it might have started when I was on here last and I said, jab me up or something. Right. And then I got a lot of hate DMs, a lot of very, uh, I guess, misinformed DMs as why we shouldn't get the vaccine. I think that was before the vaccine was even available to me. Right. So from then, from when I did get vaccinated, there was, and when this lockdown started in Sydney, I was posting a lot about it. And every time I post about it, you know, getting vaccinated, staying in lockdowns, wearing your masks, everything we are... Off, um, sorry, advised to do by the government and by health professionals, I would get these DMs of people saying things that made no logical sense um, that ranged from vaccine hesitancy to QAnon beliefs to anti-Semitism. It was just a whole, whole range. Yep. So I decided to start responding to them because a lot of these people, while 
some of their claims do need medical professionals to respond. A lot of them is, it is logic. It's just logic thinking, what is the next step? So I started to respond doing green screens and then it's just, uh, for some reason, uh, my Instagram bio is now, you call me Jabby. So it's just, <laughs> it's out of control. We started it on the drum. I, I know, it's okay. on the drum. You started it. <laughs> so, um, and what have you noticed? Because there's obviously an appetite mm. for this kind of discussion by people who are confused or don't know which camp to be on. Or Like, w what are you sensing about people's desire for either information or argument? I think people are dying for some sort of information that is understandable to them. Mm -hmm. I think especially young people watching the presses every day is getting very depressing, I'm sure, for everyone actually. Yeah. But I think it's hard to understand uh, medical lingo and also people that are older and not uh, relatable to us. So what I think a lot of pro-vax influencers are trying to do is get information from medical professionals or from the government and post it and then talk about it in a simple way. That's what I'm doing. That's what Tully Smythe is doing. She was also in that mm -hmm. little part there. But I think there's a lot of appetite for it. But I think as well because everyone is so scared, people are looking to influencers that they were already following. And perhaps if you have the ability to have really strong rhetoric, you, will, you can go either way. Right. And I think the difference is people say, why can I speak about it? And I can't, you know, other anti-vax people can't speak about it is because I'm echoing medical advice. They're echoing right. Reddit. Right. So. And you and and you lose some followers, but you gain a lot more. Is that right? Yeah, I think I've gained 40,000 followers in a couple of weeks. Mm. Um, and I think people are saying influencers are scared to speak about it because they'll lose followers. But I think it's actually because of the amount of aggression you receive in your DMs. And I think, like, I've gotten voice notes of people saying they're going to physically harm me. But I'm used to that because it's been two years. So I'm used to from The Bachelor, then all other things that Still I've done. Still not great, but yeah. But people are always mad at me for something, so I'm, I'm used to it, right? But I think for someone who's ever experienced that, who's a fashion blogger, who isn't controversial, it's hard for them to speak about it. Though I do think they should at least upload a little photo with the vaccine to try and normalise it. Mm. Julie, Julie, tell us about the potential that there is in, um, in influences and public health campaigns, because I know that in the UK and in other countries there's been very deliberate... Um, use of employment of, of influencers to, to spread the message about vaccination? I think it's vital and good on you, Abby, for what you're doing, or Jabby, as you're now called. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's great. And, and, you know, also welcome to the field because people who come into this area who already have a lot of influence then end up in this storm and it can be overwhelming sometimes. Mm -hmm. But hang in there because what you're doing is reaching a group of people who need to be vaccinated. I mean, having people your age vaccinated is one of the keys to us getting really good control of COVID. It's one of those Do Doherty scenarios that was a better case scenario. Um, but influencers are important. So if we look at the three major things that influence vaccination uptake, mm. it's those practical issues and the convenience, et cetera. It's the way we think and feel about vaccines and it's social influence. And we know that there are people who have been against vaccination and they're, you know, on Instagram and they get a lot of followers from the media attention that they get, even if it's derisive. But the people who are promoting vaccination and saying, yeah, I'm doing this, this is what people like you are doing, so you should do that too. And by the way, this is really important, not just for your health, but the health of people around you and for your ability to travel and socialise in future. They're powerful messages and using trusted spokespeople to put out those messages in really diverse ways is one of the best strategies we can use to encourage people to vaccinate. So it's great. Um Ingrid, people can be very cynical about influencers and about social media generally. Um, and what what do you see in terms of influencer behaviour and what it ends up meaning or when it matters? Well, look, I, I call myself a, a degrade personality, which is a Perth personality. So I'm on the <laughs> lower rungs of the, of the influencer. But, you know, I mean, I, you know, use my social platforms to, you know, promote thinking about, you know, very important issues like, um, like racism, standing up against racism or, you know, learning more about First Nations people, which can be a really contentious 
subject, but we do it because we know we have an opportunity to shed light and shed information and get people, I guess, buying in to what is this all about and what's sort of the part I play. So I guess for influencers, you know, particularly in, in work in community engagement, I do, I find that, you know, the better relationship and an authentic relationship you have with people, the more likely they are to sort of listen to you and interact with you and to take on the things that you say. So, you know, influencers have a, a, a really important uh, and powerful um, opportunity to spread and do some really good things, particularly around the vaccination movement at the moment, um, but also have the potential of doing the opposite. So uh, it, it's, it's a powerful thing. And yes, I do know some people who'd probably take the advice of an influencer over a health professional or, or, or even a politician. Um, mm. So they do. They, they play a very important role and important part. And, and um, people like Sister Girl who, who are doing what they're doing is mm. definitely helping um, spread the word, spread the information and getting more of those vaccination rates up. So thank you, Sister Girl, for your work. <laughs> Peter, um, the research by Oxford's Reuters Institute um, found in April last year, in terms of sources, top-down misinformation from politi politicians, celebrities and other prominent public figures made up just 20% of, of the claims of misinformation but accounted for 69% of total social media engagement. Given the problems that this government has had and the inconsistency in, in messaging, should they, this is something they should have employed and thought about a lot earlier, particularly when it comes to, you know, core younger demographics? Yes, absolutely. And when a political party really wants to get a message out, you're going to see it at election time, right? You're going to see a saturation advertising in traditional outlets, but also social media outlets. Um, they're going to have dedicated strategies. Yet when it comes to this life and death matters public health campaign, I would suggest to you that uh, it's been slow, it's been incomplete, uh, it's been half-hearted, and it's you know often you you don't hear anything in terms of a public information campaign. You have to go looking for it. A pity, in particular, the uh, non-English speaking communities in our major cities, where I mean, in New South Wales, for example, why did it take a year for any systematic effort to translate? public health messaging into community languages rather than just assume everybody speaks English. So uh, I think you do what works. Um, uh, social media works, we know that. Uh, the greatest social media influencer of our time is Donald Trump, who has persuaded millions, tens of millions of Americans still believe that he won an election uh, when we know that he didn't. Mm -hmm. So you can make people believe anything um, and so, if, you can, if social media can be used in the cause of uh, right-wing populism, ignorance and bad public health, surely governments should be able to tap it and should, have, or should already have been talking to people like Abby about how to use social media for good. Mm. And, of course, Donald Trump, you know, um, was, was, was pushed off social media platforms because of misinformation and they've had to stay very much on their toes when it comes to monitoring COVID information. But... As Peter's saying, what, they, what this all comes down to is clear messaging and amid growing reports of people in the United States either ordering ivermectin or overdosing on it, the country's drug regulator has been extremely clear with its latest missive. You are not a horse. You are not a cow. Seriously, y'all. Stop it. Julie, it's good to have it spelt out, though, isn't it? It's always good to have that reminder um, when looking for the appropriate medicine. Um, I, I forgot to spell out before, by the way, as I mentioned earlier, in 2019, you were voted by the Australian Financial Review Australia's most influential woman. So you, within the field of vaccination, well, actually, and broader than that, you are also an influencer. Can you just tell us quickly about what is the story with ivermectin? What, what's, what's the research around that? So ivermectin is a, a, a treatment for um, parasitic infections, predominantly in animals, um, but also, for example, with, in humans for things like scabies. Uh, it, you know, there has been a bit of research around its effectiveness on COVID, which is a virus. Uh, the trials that have been looked at so far don't give conclusive answers as to whether it's effective or not. The evidence is not great. If it is effective, it's likely to be a very limited effectiveness. And we actually already have things that 
are recommended for treatment of people with severe COVID who are intubated, for example. Corticosteroids can make a difference in certain instances and immunomodulating therapies can also potentially make a difference. Now, ivermectin is still being studied, um, but at this stage, you know, there are side effects from it with, with no good evidence that it works for COVID. Um, people shouldn't take it for COVID unless they're in a trial. What they should be doing is having the vaccine because there's really good evidence that the vaccine will, will um, much vastly reduce your risk of, of COVID, uh, particularly severe disease and death. So that's your answer. Get mm. vaccinated. Mm. Oh, always you with the evidence, Julie, again. Um, Abby, we're, we're, we're almost out of time, but what is it, do you think, I mean, I think you've, you've had a really interesting influence in this, in this area. What is it do you think people who aren't on social media or aren't in this space don't understand about why people worry about vaccines or, or where younger people are at when it comes to this? I think it's because the majority of the people that have the loudest voices in terms of influences are those people who are anti-vax and because of the fear of speaking out as being pro-vax because of the abuse you can cop, it turns into this, it's, it's, it's really bizarre in that why you can be in the majority, you feel like you're in the minority of influencers who are posting about vaccines. So I think that it is concerning that people who are younger and more susceptible to misinformation can watch someone uh, go on a 25 minute rant on their live about why ivermectin actually works and they've had They've had, all they have to do is say, I've done research. Right. And well, Joe Rogan, them. we just saw him, like, you know, the clip of him saying, yeah, he got COVID and yeah. he's throwing the sink at it. Although he has been saying that ivermectin is a cure-all this entire time and now he's not just taking ivermectin, he's taking other medications as well right. that are from Big Pharma that he hates so much. So it's very interesting the way that that's working out. Yeah, right. But I think it is concerning. What I would love to see, though, is a similar strategy to how influencers are... Uh, not targeted, but we are controlled in ads. So if you don't put a hashtag ad or a paid partnership, you can get your Instagram taken away from you. I would really love to see the government or Instagram as a whole have a certain amount of ticks against your name, crosses against your name, and then your, your profile is gone. Yeah, you, right. you are deplatformed because right. we have it for ads. We can do it for misinformation.